having technical difficulties today. I don't know why my live kept shutting down. Hello, 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 everybody. <laughs> Let me bring the energy. So, yeah, trying to get on live and it's not letting me on. But um, finally, hey, we made it. We made it. We made it. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a little, I don't even know that song. <laughs> I just remember that part. But yeah, we here, we here, we here. Hey, everybody. Y'all come on in here. So we are going to be uh, discussing some things. I hope everyone had a good week. I had an awesome weekend. I always like to catch y'all up with what I got going on while um, um, while we're apart. <laughs> Since we coupled up while we're apart. But uh, I had a good weekend. I had my, um, since the last time I saw you guys, let me see, Wednesday, I had my therapy session, my physical therapy on Thursday. It was a good session. Oh, oh y'all, look. Uh, I can lift my arm. I can lift my arm. <laughs> God is good, right? <laughs> but uh, I had my therapy session on Thursday. Friday, I had my woman to woman network meeting. I met um, some new ladies. So that was nice. Y'all know I like meeting new people. Um, let me see. What else? Saturday, I, I actually did not make the walk. I was supposed to do the breast cancer uh, awareness walk. But, I mean, if you've been following me for a while, you already know that sometimes I'm not good with crowds. <laughs> and the more I thought about how many people was going to be there, the more I couldn't do it. <laughs> I I think I had gave too much of my energy to the ladies Friday night. Not that it was a bunch of ladies, but where we met at, it was a lot of people. And so, um, and you know, when I, when I am somewhere, I try to be in the moment. And so just trying to pour into them and doing everything, you know, doing all of that Friday night, I ended up Saturday morning, I honestly did not go to the breast cancer awareness uh, walk because I was, I had to stay with myself. So I hung out around the house Saturday. Look, y'all, like y'all asked me what I did. Well, I'm telling you. So I hung around the house Saturday. Uh, I ended up going to the movies on a double date, which was nice. And then Sunday, hung out. Monday, went into the office. Um, I was drained Monday for some reason. Came home, took a nap. <laughs> and then I had a meeting with the business partner. And then Tuesday, therapy again. Uh, I was supposed to have both of my therapy sessions, but my... Um, my uh, psychologist um, canceled, so I had my physical therapy. And then now it's Wednesday, so we back together again. Yay! <laughs> so what did y'all do over the weekend, huh? What did y'all do? <laughs> Don't let me tell y'all about my boring life, because um, right now, just stand around the house, which is good, you know, because like yesterday, my daughter needed me really bad. And I was here. So that felt good just to be here and not be over the phone trying to talk her through something. So it felt good. It feels good um, being home, being with these two uh, last of the Mohicans that are here. And, uh, and so, you know, life is good. I have no complaints. Who's on here? Because I... I tell you, I don't know why Facebook does that. I can see numbers, but I can't see who is on here. Um, let me see. 
Oh, there we go. Hey, Derek, how you doing? Hi, Marie. Hey, Krista. Hey, Mahogany. <laughs> yeah, girl, double date. Aw, <laughs> uh, thank you, Marie. <laughs> I assume you're talking about me. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mahogany, we'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> but it was good. It's all good. Um, but today we are supposed to be talking about, I had a few topics come through, um, but when I looked to check the two that I can do tonight that I can kind of put together is one, um, the admissions packet for a client and then two, the contract for the manager. So I'm going to try to cover both of those tonight. Um, I know that the admissions packet is a little lengthy, but if you are in the medical field or the healthcare arena or worked around group homes, you're going to be familiar when I tell you what something is. If you don't understand what a piece is, just type it in the comments and I will answer your questions. Okay? Just type it in the comments. All right. So... Um, so as far as, before we get started, anybody got any questions in regards to my weekend? No, just like, <laughs> does anybody want to share what they did this weekend? Y'all can still give me y'all wins. Don't think just because the name changed that y'all can't tell me when good things happen. I was looking back through last week and we have somebody who actually got their day program up and running. So I'm excited about that. And then I had someone that I had a call with today. I, I do consultation calls on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And so uh, one of the people that I did a consultation call with today said that they were a referral from someone um, that their group home is up and running and it is going very well. And so I always like to hear, and, and the thing is, when I help people sometimes, they don't come back to me just right off the bat. We may see each other in passing or when I'm traveling, or they may come in on a um, a post, but I, I don't know. I'm not big on, because I'm in the moment, you guys. When I'm somewhere, I'm in the moment. So it's really kind of hard for me to say, oh, can you give me a review? I know when I do, when I do things with Shronica, with the work series, Shronica's on point. Y'all know Shronica is very task driven. And I'm kind of like, go with the, not really go with the flow, but I'm, I'm trying to talk to people and feel and <laughs> all of that. I'm in my feelings and uh, just trying to make sure everybody's good. I'm trying to be a servant, you know, so it's a little different for me. So when it comes to getting reviews and things like that, I don't always remember. Um, but I I appreciate the people that are great at that. It's just I'm not. I'm horrible. And so when people come back or someone comes and says, hey, such and such referred me you help them with their group home or you help them with their policies and now they're up and going. I just appreciate it. It warms my heart. So he just said how highly the guy has spoke of me and, and he was so appreciative of what I helped him with. So he was like, I definitely want to work with you. So I said, okay. So, um, so it was just a good call. All my calls today were good yesterday too. No bad calls. Everything was good. So I'm just, look, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just in a good mood today. I have my grapes and my Cool Whip. <laughs> I'm trying not to eat ice cream, y'all. And so I had grapes and Cool Whip. I was like, I want a snack, but I wanted something sweet. And uh, it was good. I needed that grapes and Cool Whip today. So I'm going to give it to y'all today. No, I'm just playing. So anyway, let me look back. Somebody made a comment. Became a certified anger management specialist. So I will start offering classes and evaluations 
for individuals through and it it always cuts it off these comments and I can't get to them but congratulations mahogany I'm so proud of you I want did you see my comment you know Derek Derek calls me his cousin <laughs> <laughs> me and Derek met years ago and I went through his class too so he's really he is good at what he does and so I'm very appreciative of him but yeah that's funny that you actually went to his training and I know him so that is so funny to, to me but um yes great training it is a good uh uh something good to add to your portfolio you know how I've, I've talked to y'all that about that before? Adding different things to your portfolio. I am a true believer that is one of my core values in my business is to be a, a continuous learner, okay? And so think of things that can tie into your business that you can add things to your portfolio. It's kind of like with me. We do group homes but we also do consulting for people with group homes and then in that consulting we also do paperwork we do policies we do uh trainings we do there's just a lot that ties into that and then what did i tell y'all because i do group homes and i know people always need legal assistance so i added legal shield to my portfolio so now i'm a legal shield representative i just passed my um, insurance, because I told y'all, I just feel like if you have a group home, you need a life insurance policy. And so, because I've had that, uh, uh, one of my past clients passed away, did not have a will or policy or anything. So now that is something I tie into my portfolio. So now Legal Shield helps with wills. You can get insurance policies and I'm a, I'm I'm not fully licensed yet. I did pass the test. I'm just waiting to finish my licensing process. But adding things to your portfolio that you can stack. It's kind of like stacking in the medical field, right? You stack services in some states. You can't do it in all states. But you stack services so you can have different sources of income within your business. And so, Mahogany, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. That top-tier mentee, okay? You always, always, she's always learning. Nurse practitioner, already up there. You know, in my mind, you already up there, but never stop learning. The rest of you guys, never stop learning. Continuous learning. So I don't want to take up a lot of y'all time. I'm just talking, talking, talking today. I'm talkative today. So anyway, admissions packet is what we're going over. Someone wanted to know what needs to be included in the admissions packet. And so I just want to kind of give you guys, and I'm not saying everything that's in here, because it's going to depend on what type of home you do. It's going to depend on regulations. They may have added pieces. It, what I tell y'all, I'm going to get a shirt that says it depends, because it does. It depends. So, in my welcome packet, I'll say that, in my welcome packet, these are things that we have within our welcome packets. First of all, you want to have a welcome letter. You want to have a welcome letter just welcoming the client into your home. You know, that's a good thing to have. Um, have information about the group home, like an overview, kind of like the mission, the vision, um, ser of different services that you offer just so the client can know. And then two, I always tell you guys, you have to get people to buy into your vision. Me, myself, I have a big, huge poster on my wall with my core values, my mission, and my vision in every home. You know why? Because I want people to see it. I want them to say it. I want them to hear it and I want it to continually be refreshed in their mind. So every staff call, uh, all staff that we have, they have to, hey Lisa, they have to, our staff has to repeat 
our mission statement, then the clients get to see it every day. These are our core values. This is our mission statement. Regardless if they pay attention or not, it's still posted. What the Bible say? Write it on the wall. Make it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You put it up there to, to so people can remember it. So there's no mistakes. You know what our mission, our vision, and our core values are, okay? And so you may want to have something like that inside of your packet so when they first come to the home, they can have that information. Um, then contact information, you know, basically maybe you want to put who the administrator is, the phone number, any emergency contacts, anything like that. Um, you want to have some type of agreement, some type of a mission agreement, make it a formal agreement that kind of outlines, um, what is expected. It could basically kind of be house rules. You know what I'm saying? It could be a list of house rules. Do you understand that if you're in this house, you cannot do this. There is no stealing, whatever. And then you have them sign it. You want to have consent forms, consent for services, okay? If they have a guardian, now all of this that I'm saying to you, if they have a guardian, if they are not their own uh, guardian or if they are, um, if they are not, you know, where they can, um, fin now, this does not include a, peer, a power of attorney. I'm saying if they have an official guardian, the guardian is your client. So understand that. The patient is not getting this or the member or the client or whatever you call them in your home. That's, that's not who's getting this. The guardian is because the guardian is your client. So just know that, Okay. Not the mama, if they are, if they an adult and they mom wants, no, they have to be the official guardian. And, and in my home, we make them show uh, proof that they have, are the guardian. Because if they don't, then that client has to say so. Okay, so remember that. Um, so you want to do the consent forms. You want to have something about HIPAA, um, any confidentiality forms. So you want to um, get that signed uh, and have that information. Of course, you want a medical history. You want to know what's going on. Now, I'm, a, I'm just going to go back and kind of tell you guys. In my home, we do an assessment before the people even get there. So a lot of this information has to be submitted to us from their case manager, social worker, whoever, and we have it. Okay, and we already have um, things like their um, history and what is, what is it called? History and something, h and I think it's called. I can't remember, but we already have their medical history. We get all of that before they even come to our home. So I'm just letting you know, if you want to set it up like that, we do a, 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 a over the phone or a Zoom assessment where we talk to the client. We tell them what our rules are. We tell them what they're responsible for. And if they're in agreement, and then we get that packet from the case manager, and then they come to our home. So this is not like, I'm just letting you know, we do our stuff before they even get there. <laughs> Plus, ain't nobody got time. <laughs> and then medication management agreement. Um, you want to outline the medication, like how it's going to be stored, things like that. Whatever your policy is. And that might just be pulling your policy, making a copy of your policy and having them sign it. Um, any medical emergency medical authorizations. Um, of course, insurance information. Because most times... Um, if it's not private pay, it's going to be some type of insurance that's going to be paying for this. And so you need to know the details of, you know, their insurance number, um, the provider, whatever that policy number is, their date of birth, whatever you need, their primary care physician. Like I said, a lot of times, most of this stuff we have before they even get to our house. Um. You also want to have a personal care plan. 
A personal care plan may be called a treatment plan. It may be called an a individual service plan. It's just going to depend on what type of home, what, what did I say again? It depends. <laughs> it's going to depend on what type of home you have and what type of clients that you carry. So it could be, you know, called whatever in your state. But it is uh, basically outlines um, the type of goals and requirements for that client. Um, things like resident rights and responsibilities, we make sure that they have a copy and they sign it and they put it in their folder. So you want.